Okay, here is example number two on how to perform a one sample. All right, Z test for P. Okay, so let's go through the example. This one, according to the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, job stress poses a major threat to healthcare workers. A new report claims that 70% of restaurant employees feel this that work stress has a negative impact on their personal lives. Managers of a large restaurant chain wonder whether this claim is valid with their employees. A random sample of 100 employees finds that 68 answered yes. All right. Does work stress have a negative impact on their life? Okay. So do these data provide convincing evidence at a significant level of um, point 0.1 that the proportion of employees in this chain would say yes um, differs from 0.75. Now this says it defers, defers. Now what does that mean defers? That means when we create our hypothesis, we start with our null. And remember our null is what we assume to be true. To be true, all right? And what we assume to be true is that the proportion of people um, that have uh, that that um, answer yes, does work have a negative impact on their thing? Is seventy five percent? Seventy five percent. Now, because we believe that it may defer, it may defer. That means that our alternate hypothesis, we we believe to be true is possibly that it doesn't equal 75%. Now, it doesn't equal 75%. So that means it could be greater than 75%. It could be less than 75%. We just don't agree that it equals 75%. And so our parameter that we're testing out is the P. Um, P is the true, true proportion. Whoops. Pro proportion. All right. Um, of... Um, what we got here? Um, employees, proportion of employees who um, report report that work stress has a negative negative impact on their personal life, all right, personal life. And I don't, I, some people could say that's probably maybe true. So P is a true proportion of employees who report that work stress has a negative impact on their personal life. So um, what statistics do we find? Well, we found a statistic um, that equals, they got 68 out of 100 which actually equals 0.68, which does defer from 0.75. So we do have evidence. I don't know if it's convincing, but we do have evidence that it is different. Um, our level of significance, we state, is our alpha level of 0.1. So we're doing the state of our four-step process. Um, we're going to first state the parameter, always state the parameter. We're going to then state our hypothesis. We make sure that we have our test statistic that we're going to use in level of significance. Now, the name of the procedure we're going to do, I stated above. This is the one sample, because we have one sample. And this is going to be a Z test, okay? So whenever we use anything for proportions, all right, for P, all right, a one sample Z test for P. Now, our conditions are, um, first off, do we have a random sample? All right, um, yes, we had a random sample of 100 employees, okay? Employees, okay? And the next thing is, do we have independence, okay? Is there any independence? Um, well, are these 100 employees? Are they less than 10% of all, all employees? All right, all employees. Um, I have to spell that right. All right, all employees in the restaurant uh, in the restaurant change. Um, and I would say, yeah, that would make sense if it's a large enough of all employees in the chain. Um, yeah, I think that's reasonable. All right, because if you have a I mean, you got tens of thousands, so you know, ten percent would be definitely maybe just a, a thousand. So yeah, that that seems reasonable. So we're gonna say yes on independence. And the final thing is, do we have normalcy? All right, is this normal? Um, now we're gonna use the large count condition because that is our primary driver. It does not say that this distribution is approximately normal, so it doesn't give us that that it is. But we're gonna use the large count, and basically, if we have 0.75, all right, um, times 100. 
all right, which is going to be 75. Is that greater than or equal to 10? That is correct. And also, if we took uh, 0.25, 0.25, that's 1 minus the p-value times 100, because that's our n value. Is that greater than or equal to 10? The answer is yes. So we have yes to all these conditions. So next thing we can do is we can then go and form some do. All right. So what do we do here? Okay. Well, our general formula for finding this, all right, is we're going to find a um, z score. All right, z score, and you can kind of go and do a specific and whatnot. We're going to do our work. So what we're looking for right here, okay, is we have this little picture. All right, and we want to figure out what is the z value because we're doing a z test, and we have a. All right, we're going to take our p hat minus our p. Divide by the square root of our, well, whatever our standard deviation of our um, sample is. And so in this case, we have a value of 0.65, or sorry, 0.68, because 68 out of 100, correct? That's our p hat, minus what our proposed proportion is. So assuming that that assumption is true, okay, we're going to divide this by then our standard deviation. So our standard deviation is going to be 0.75 times 0.25, all right, divided by um, our n value, which is 100, okay? And so we're going to find out what that z value is. <clears throat> we're going to draw a little picture here. Now, this is where you have to be a little bit careful right here, all right? So when we have this, we're going to assume that we have 0.75. We're going to be using this standard deviation of um, p hat right there. And when we have this, we saw that we have 0.68, okay? And what we're going to do is we are trying to figure out, okay, what is the possibility that this is going to be 0.68, but basically it's going to defer on both sides, okay? So essentially, um, <clears throat> when we find this z-score, okay, or this value, we're going to say that it's going to be um, from both both of these different sides. So I'm going to just going to take, actually, I'm going to make this, I'm going to find the z-score. We're going to say <clears throat> we have zero and one. Okay. We're going to figure out from the first from both sides. And so what we have right here is, let's just uh, figure this out first. So if you take out your calculators, you can do this by hand. I'm going to also do this on our calculator. All right. I'm going to just show you how to do that um, on your TIs. All right. And then we're going to divide that by the square root of 0.78 times 0.25, all right, divided by 100, and I'll close that up, all right, and I get an answer of negative 1.617, we'll go like that, all right, so what we have is negative 1.617, but since we're looking at this side, we're also taking consideration that it could also be on this other side as well, because it could have from both, it could defer, so it could be on this side as well. So in order to find out this p-value, all right, this p-value, um, what we can do is we can take our values right here, find out one side, and just multiply that by 2. And so when we find our first p-value, and you can go use this on your table A, or you can go on your calculator, and you can put all these different values in, all right, And what we find out is that we actually have a value of, <clears throat> so our first p-value of just this one side, okay, um, our probability is going to be uh, 0.053. I'll just say that. Well, we have two sides, so actually our p-value is going to be 2 times 0.053. All right, 0.0253. And so what we have here, we're going to multiply that by 2, and so we have a, actually a p-value of, point one zero um five nine ish okay so somewhere around there now if you take out your calculators okay if you take out your calculator and you go to stat again and you go to um test all right and we go down to this once again we're doing a one all right one sample proportion z test right there um, we have our value which is we think it's going to be 75 all right um, we took 68 all right, came back over there. We had 100 right here. Now, since it's deferring, we're saying that is not equal to, all right, not equal to. And we're going to go down here. We're going to calculate this. And let's see how we come out. Well, right here, notice how we get the same thing. Um, our p-value, once again, is, all right, oops, going to equal that. 
And you can see how that's going to equal that because we had to double what our other value is. We found our test statistics would be 0 0.65 or 68, and we found our end value to be 10. Okay, so you can see how we can use all this information and how we can generate that using our calculators a little faster and efficient, more efficient. Um, and we can find all this cool stuff. All right, so we found um, our test stat and so on and so forth. So, um, a conclusion, what conclusion can we make? Well, um, since our value, all right, since we found that um, 0 0.1059 is greater than our alpha value, okay, our alpha value, once again, is um, 0.1, all right, 0.1, all right, because we're doing 10% uh, more significant, all right, it's greater than 0.1, we fail to reject the null. All right, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Um, we do not have convincing evidence. We have evidence, we just don't have convincing evidence. Evidence that um, what we got here. That the true proportion at the at the true proportion <clears throat> portion of um, of employees employees all right a true proportion of employees that say um, say work has a negative negative impact on their personal life defers All right defers um defers from 0.75 okay and we don't have that Okay, and so um, that's 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 what we found. So we reject the null. All right, we we failed to reject the null. Uh, we just don't have convincing evidence um, to demonstrate that the alternate is true. Okay, um, or it could be true. And therefore, um, so that that that's how we go through the four-step process. Now, one kind of thing, an extension problem. If you want to check this one out, and looking at this and talking about a confidence interval. So let's say we did a ninety percent confidence interval for the restaurant worker data. Um, it was also created and found that we had this, okay? Now, I explain how the confidence interval is consistent with this, but gives more information than the test. Well, right here, we have a confidence interval that the true mean is between 0 0.6032 and 0 0.756. Well, we suspect, well, the, the hypothesis says that we have a proportion, all right, of 0.75, does is that in our confidence interval our 90% our confidence interval the answer is yes yes all right so yes 0.75 is in the 90% confidence interval all right and it actually could be like anywhere from 60 to 75 six way so definitely um, 0.75 is plausible, all right? So yes, 0.3 is in the 90% confidence interval um, and and provides, and, <laughs> um, and therefore, and so we have that. So it's within that, all right? Um, but also 0.68 is also kind of in there. So I guess it could it could be part of that chance process that you might just get um, some information that's going to be from 0.60 to 0.75. All right, so explain how this, so in point seven is a ninth and confidence interval, and, <clears throat> and um, we would suspect to have, all right, 90% um, of our test portions, or our um, sample, Portions. All right. Um, portions to contain. 
right? 0.75, all right? And truthfully, 0.68 is within this margin of error, so it is between those things that we could have. So um, that would be kind of my, I mean, if you're talking about like confidence level, all right, this is where confidence interval, and we could suspect that 9% of our confidence would contain that. All right, that's a confidence level, all right? And so um, it is consistent that um, we would not, um, we, um, we, or, or that uh, 0.68, um, or our, maybe add our test statistic. Now I'm just kind of rambling a little bit. I apologize. Our test stat, all right, of um, 0.68 um, is with in the conference interval. Interval, um, and not that unlikely to occur and that's why um, since that's in there it's not unlikely to occur so if both of them are in there all right so um, they're very very common if we would do that so all those things just kind of re-illustrate that this is not going against what we found above all right well once again going through here we did a one sample z test for p um went through this four-step process of state plan do and then conclude we also had a, uh, a little extrapolate or a little uh um, added bonus of seeing how this also makes sense um if we create a confidence interval um, of a confidence level of 90 percent all right so i hope this helps you out and good luck and god bless in the rest of your problems